When it comes to business travel in Orlando, it's never business as usual. Sure, I could go on for days about all the incredible places to hold meetings, or the Michelin dining, or the breadth of industries that call it home. But when it's time for your business to make the extraordinary happen, Albert Monero of Limitless Solutions said it best, Orlando is an incredible place for innovation. So dive in and see what's happening in Orlando, where the possibilities for business travel are unbelievably real. Learn more at orlandoforbusiness.com. But of course, it's not just uh, in France, far from it, that we're hearing and seeing all of this outpour of grief and condolence and solidarity from from all over the world. Not least, of course, enormous interest, as there always is, in a, from another republic, in this case, the United States, someone else, who, or another country that decided to get rid of its monarchy, in this case, the British monarchy, some time ago. But it doesn't stop their absolute fixation with all things regal, all things royal. Uh, and as I say, we're told that the American president has briefed the White House tonight, saying that uh, Joe Biden will be travelling to Britain to attend the Queen's funeral whenever that comes. So the world's most powerful leader, the world's leader of the world's most powerful democracy, Britain's closest ally, deciding to come to attend that funeral and pay uh, his respects. With the details, LBC's US correspondent Simon Marks. Uh, Simon, uh, is this not really a surprise, I suppose, that President Biden is going to attend this funeral, or is it? Uh, no, it's not a surprise. I mean, I think we'd all assumed that he would indeed want to be there. There's some complicated discussions taking place behind the scenes, though, Lewis, because remember uh, that the United Nations General Assembly is course, due yeah. to kick off the week after next, and President Biden's supposed to be making his keynote speech before that body on September the 19th. He's a busy Tuesday. man. Uh, say again? He's a busy man. Uh, he is a busy man, uh, but clearly uh, he and a raft of other uh, world leaders that are likely to be uh, wanting to attend the funeral are also due to be attending the UN General Assembly. So there's some cl complexity uh, taking place behind the scenes because clearly the British uh, government and the royal family will decide when the funeral is, mm -hmm. and that's going to trump, uh, to all intents and purposes, uh, whatever plans they've made to begin uh, the UN General Assembly. The big speech is are all due to start on Tuesday, September the 20th. Let's see where that goes. There is massive interest here. I mean, my phone has been buzzing non-stop with alerts from American news organisations. And just as I was waiting to come on air, three minutes ago, the New York Times flashed uh, the Queen's life in photos, reminding us all that during her reign, Queen Elizabeth was a symbol of continuity in an era of upheaval. They've certainly known a fair old bit of upheaval here uh, over the the last uh, couple of years. Take a listen to what Joe Biden said last night uh, addressing a group uh, of Democrats at a Democrat National Committee meeting in Maryland. Before I begin, I want to say a few words about Queen Elizabeth. I just stopped by the British Embassy to sign the condolence book in her honor. I had the opportunity to meet her before she passed, and she was an incredibly gracious and decent woman. And the thoughts and prayers of the American people are with the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in their grief. Well, plenty of other people have followed in his footsteps and made the trek to the British Embassy on Massachusetts Avenue here in Washington, D.C., signing that book of condolence. There's more than 100 uh, bouquets of flowers uh, in front uh, of the embassy on Embassy Row. Uh, other tributes uh, are being paid up on Capitol Hill. The flags there flying at half-mast as they are uh, at the White House and at U.S. Uh, embassies and diplomatic missions uh, all over the world. Take a listen to the tribute that was paid on the floor of the Senate last night uh, by the Senate Majority Leader, Democrat Charles Schumer of New York. It is a marvel to think that on the day of Her Majesty's coronation, Harry Truman was in the White House. The world was still coming out of the shadow of the Second World War, entering a bold, uncertain, uncharted future. In her time, she came to know 15 different prime ministers, 14 U.S. presidents, traveled to well over 100 countries and made over 200 official state visits. She was the first British monarch ever to address a joint session of Congress. And thanks to her, the special relationship between the United States and the U.K. gained even more special significance. Her reign saw the dawn of the atomic age, the age of the Internet, the fall of the Soviet Union, an unprecedented global pandemic. She didn't just witness the great turns of history, she helped shape them.
over the seven decades, seven decades of her reign. And every step of the way, she was precisely the kind of leader the moment demanded. You heard him there reflecting that kind of historic arc that she witnessed from the beginning of her reign all the way through until the end. Uh, that reflective in a way of the fact that the United States doesn't have anybody that occupies the same position of continuity. Presidents come and go. They don't have a royal family here. They kicked them out, of course. Uh, when some they time declared, ago. When they, exactly, some time ago when they declared independence. And yet they do still quite like to live vicariously through ours. It's been widely noted here that she made four state visits to the United States during her reign, five state dinners and two unofficial visits. Those include a couple of trips to Kentucky where she liked to, liked to keep an eye uh, on uh, some of the horses uh, that were uh, uh, being developed and in training. But she did have a, a tight connection with the people she met. Lawrence Mann uh, is the co-author of a book called The Queen and the USA. He met the Queen when she visited Virginia, just down the road from us here in Washington DC, uh, for the 2007 Jamestown commemoration. That was the four 400th anniversary of the establishment of the first English-speaking settlement on American shores. Here's what he had to say today. I think that Virginians uh, feel a special affinity for. I think that Virginia is probably the most England-centric state in the Union, yes, Virginians will feel a palpable loss with her passing. And I think that's true in many other parts of the country as well, where she visited, met people, uh, and left lasting memories. Uh, and that partly explains uh, the abiding interest in what's taking place in the UK and the enormous amount of airtime on television and uh, newsprint that is now being devoted here to covering uh, every twist and turn as uh, the transition advances. I'd say what's Simon, just briefly, I mean, what's really notable about that in one sense, right, is it's not easy to get bipartisan agreement in Washington, D.C. between Democrats and the Republicans. And yet every single president, I'm very little to imagine that Barack Obama and Donald Trump agree on, but every single president were completely enamoured and beguiled by her. Yeah, absolutely. I was very struck by something that uh, Barack Obama said in his statement yesterday. He said uh, she listened deeply, thought strategically, uh, and was responsible for considerable global diplomatic achievements. Uh, that was uh, quite a fulsome tribute for any American president to be paying, but it was echoed in many ways by what Donald Trump said uh, in uh, his statement yesterday. Queen Elizabeth's historic and remarkable reign, he wrote, left a tremendous legacy of peace and prosperity for Great Britain. Her leadership and enduring diplomacy secured and advanced alliances with the United States and countries around the world. Rare to find Donald Trump and Barack Obama echoing one another, except in statements paying tribute to the Queen. I tell you what, um, with a lot has been said about the Queen in the last uh, 24 hours, but bringing, and her achievements, but bringing Barack Obama and Donald Trump together, while well, that is taking it to another level entirely. Simon, uh, thanks so much for joining us there. Thanks uh, to Simon, uh, LBC's US correspondent Simon Marks there. Are you the creative type? Then you already know lots of cool things Photoshop can do like create eye-popping images for social and gorgeous graphics for t-shirts and posters. But did you also know it can instantly turn a gray sky into a fiery sunset, change black and white to color in a click, or make anything in your photo magically disappear? Maybe you're wondering, can anyone use Photoshop to take images from ordinary to amazing? Nope, everyone can. Visit Photoshop.com and get started for free.